So what is product strategy? Like <laughs> I last week I tried to have this discussion with Atco team and uh basically the, the immediate reaction was like what kind of corporate bullshit is that? Uh and uh they were very right because I was uh sort of presenting some document that is part of the presentation and it was like okay why we need this. So uh but I think that the problem was in, in my presentation. I, I actually wanted to quickly go through that discussion and uh, I didn't handle it properly. Because for me, product strategy, uh, it's not really about that you fill some form, like I don't know, some kind of business canvas or or you prepare some presentation or, or you fill some form. It's really about ongoing communication uh, towards the team and stakeholders and maybe sometimes even to, to customers. And um, what you what you are trying to communicate is basically you trying to communicate uh, all the user insights, user needs, everything we know about the users, and everything what we need, what we know about the business, all the business insights, uh, and for example, even like some kind of competitive analysis to to see basically where is our place in the market to be successful and the, you know here i'm saying that mainly product designer and product manager should be communicating that and they should be communicating that to the to the team uh to developers qa devops uh marketing but also to to stakeholders to uh to be uh so everyone are on the same page um, <clears throat> So, but like, what, what what is it exactly? Like, for me, like product strategy is like basically sort of common understanding in the dev team and between the stakeholders uh, of users, business, and competitors insights. And here's the main part that helps the team or guides the team in doing the right decisions about what they should build, but also about what insights they should uh, try to learn uh, because very often especially in the beginning uh, you know if you are a startup or but like it's also valid if you start some new bigger feature frankly you don't know much and uh, one of the first tasks is actually to, to learn about the users what they need uh, about the business which business model is working and so on so <clears throat> uh, this is why i think we should have product strategy and again it's not a form it's not a presentation it's really continuous communication in the team about why we are building this why we are trying to learn those things uh so if i'm a little bit esoteric it's like about the team is mindful about why they are doing uh, certain decisions um so that's that for me is product strategy. Uh, from different perspective, you know, for me, product strategy uh, could be useful uh, in a sense that it really helps the team uh, aligns, help them really uh, sort of empower them to do right decisions. So uh, in practical terms, like let's imagine exercise, like you know, you find out as a, as a PM, for example that for next six, 12 months, uh, you need to disappear and the team will be uh, on its own, right? And let's say you have two, three hours to communicate what they should be building in uh, next uh, six to 12 months. Uh, this, what you would say in those two, three hours or what document you would write in those two, three hours, that's for me the product strategy, basically, Obviously, it cannot be a list of tasks. It's not even a roadmap. It's it's really a direction, uh, some kind of guiding principles that really, if uh, the team really understands them properly, it helps them for next uh, you know many months to to uh, to do right job and focus on the right things and deliver what uh, what uh, they should deliver. So you know now really imagine that for example uh, on some projects like what would you communicate on your project uh, here in Salzita if you need to disappear uh, and so what you would uh, tell them right what we what we would tell them 
uh, I don't know, on Ordamo, what we would tell uh, on Atco, what we would tell the team on on all those other projects, like what we would tell them, right? The team uh, and how how uh, they would act. So that's for me the product strategy. <clears throat> so if um, the team knows like what is the product strategy or there is this uh, common feeling that we are all aligned and what we know why we are doing this decision, we are mindful about them. Like the general, it should help with three things. Uh, first, do better decision. Again, the decision is about what we should build next, but also what we should try to learn about our users and about our uh, business. It should uh, improve the alignment. You know, we have different roles. Uh, QA, uh, you know, DevOps, full stack designers. Uh, each of the role has sort of their own strategy. You know, QA is have, they, they have testing strategy. Uh, designer should have at least, it doesn't matter if it's really formal or informal, but there is some design strategy and so on. Like uh, developers, uh, they have in mind some kind of architecture they are aiming for. And uh, if they know what we are building, uh where we are heading like they can do even uh good or better decisions uh in those particular areas also um the last point is about that if people know why are doing why why are they doing things like generally they feel more committed to it and they are uh, way more motivated it's, it's very different and we can see clearly on our projects when we have projects where basically you know we receive tasks in jira github it doesn't matter uh, which tool we use and you know uh, the team just just doing them versus uh projects where uh you know the team is in control they 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 are doing uh, again mindful decision why we are building this feature they are discussing it trying to fi they are trying to figure out the designs and and so on like uh, the commitment and the motivation uh, there is is way higher and the results are way better. That, that's reality. Uh, so the goal of the product strategy, uh, again, is to empower the team uh, so they feel more motivated and they do uh, better jobs. <clears throat> so I already mentioned this this piece. Like product strategy is is um, again it's a communication, ongoing communication inside the team, which uh, helps to also do better decision in particular areas like I don't know like design strategy, like what should be look and feel of our application, uh, testing strategy. What are the most uh, important you know features? What is the core functionality? That we should test it right like uh, again the big part of the product strategy is the user insight and if if testers if our qa knows uh for example what is the most used features what is the feature that uh that uh you know uh, makes uh, us the product that they choose to use and 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 they are really using the app because of this feature like we should really be focusing on testing and and making sure that with every release, we, we don't break it uh, uh, the opposite way that with every release, it will be even better. Uh, you know, app architecture, like the developers, you know, sometimes uh, we are experimenting and some features are sort of uh, proof of concept or hacked uh, because we are just testing something. But sometimes, like, we know that this is the core functionality and, and the, the architecture behind it should be really robust and, 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 and be ready to scale. Uh, so, uh, so uh, there are no issues in in production, uh, and so on, right? Like marketing strategy, we are not <clears throat> usually involved in that, but uh, hopefully in future we will be. And also, for example, for Razi, it would be very interesting where we are heading, or I think to be very, it's absolutely critical for him to to know what is the product strategy, so he can um, prepare all those campaigns such as uh, the marketing channels and, and uh, stuff like this. So uh, this should really help us to align with all those, let's say, segments of what uh, we are doing when we are developing a uh, new product. So um, again, maybe repeating, 
the product product strategy should answer us question about what as a team we should try to learn next uh, and it can sort of uh, uh, became some kind of research plan that okay you know we need to find out if uh actually i don't know this feature is it really attracting users is it the key feature that is differentiating us uh comparing to our competitors and stuff like that so some kind of research plan uh i think we are still um uh, let's say exploring how to do research and definitely it's something that is new new for us but it's absolutely critical uh but yeah it's something that we should uh, uh working on and the second question that uh, product strategy, strategy is answering is like what we should build next, which is a roadmap, have a, some kind of clear plan what we are building. Uh, definitely, I feel that on some projects we could uh, improve it. And again, it's not about have like clear milestone that in three months we will develop this, uh, but just the direction and know and sort of sense of what is priority, what makes sense, uh, and and so on. But also, it's just not, uh, it's not only about, I would say, those high level questions. I think the product strategy and the alignment around product strategy should help each role with uh, particular tasks uh, because then they can do, uh, you know, better decision. Few examples, right? Like if designers know all the insight about users, business, and so on, and when they are designing new features, they clearly know if this feature is important or not like is it a big, big priority should they like spend lots of time on it or there are more important tasks or should they create you know super great experience for that feature or is it just you know on some project we uh, on on one project we had uh, this discussion about that we need to add uh, input box for for or like uh, record for taxes uh, for for dishes and basically um, you know, it's not that critical feature, right? So, for example, the designers shouldn't try to create some super great enhanced user experience because it's not that important. Like, we need to have it, but it's not that important, right? Uh, for developers, again, is it like, okay, are we building this feature uh, as a proof of concept? Are we just experimenting right now? Or is it core functionality that is, uh, that needs to be ready for uh, to be scaled. Uh, how how it fits to the the you know the whole architecture and so on. So for QA again, we already uh, discussed that. Uh, I think it's super important for them to know if this uh, feature is uh, it will be widely used or or not. Like how important is it and, and so on. So they know how much time should should they focus on on covering that. For example, by automation tests, and and if they should with every release do some kind of regression testing to really make sure that the core function is not broken and and stuff like that. And uh, the same thing is for DevOps again. Like they need to prepare, uh, you know, the scalability of the application if it makes sense and, and stuff like that. So again, it it should. It's not also about creating some research plan and roadmap. But hopefully, when the whole team is aligned about the product strategy, uh, they can do better decision uh, when they are working on on specific tasks because they know all the context. Um, product strategy is definitely, as I said, it's a it's a constant communication. It's not like that we will create some, uh, you know. We will fill some some canvas that is uh, on internet, or that we will create some short presentation, and and then we are done. It's constant uh, communication, which means that it's uh, that there is constant let's say uh, evolution of of the product strategy. Here on this chart, I'm trying to sort of uh, sketch. Uh, Simplified, let's say, uh, mm, journey how the uh, product strategy is usually uh, usually evolving. Uh, you know, here it's more like for when we start new product, but frankly, it's uh, very much true for if you start new feature, new bigger feature for on existing product. 
uh, basically uh, it's working the pretty much uh, same way. So, you know, when you are in the beginning, uh, so basically what the chart shows you, like here on, on, on this axis, it shows like basically here is the startup and slowly evolving to some enterprise solution uh, that that is, uh, you know, leading in the market, let's say. And here are, let's say, the percentage of activities that, that you are doing in, in that phase. So obviously when you are a startup, uh, the most time the team should dedicate to learning because you know we still don't know how the product should work what is our positioning uh sorry what is uh you know how how what are our users how they behave uh which business models is is working for us and so on so you dedicate most of the time for really learning and uh, but over time, you slowly start, uh, you know, spend more and more time on building. Uh, I would say in the first phase, uh, you always try to find like how we should position the product, and you're trying to achieve something that's called market fit. Basically, if you find a market fit, uh, it means that you get some traction, you have some working business model. Uh, and your business is viable, right? So uh, that's what you are trying to achieve. And then in the later stages, it's really about trying to scale the product so you can uh, control even more market and and be even more successful. So uh, basically it's more about uh, scaling the, the product uh, and finding uh, more and more users that, that would use your application and improving the business model. Uh, also, um, in the beginning, you have nothing uh, like there are, there are two parts of the of the research. Uh, like one part is that you do things like user interviews, uh, trying to understand what problems they are having. Uh, you try to somehow investigate the, the business. For example, you do some kind of competitive analysis and so on. Uh, but when you have something, when you build some initial product, you can start, uh, you know, and you have, for example, some beta version and people start using it. You can start doing things like user testing. You can check uh, Google Analytics and stuff like that. And over time, actually, this, this way of learning about people is more and more important. And probably you will do actually more of those things. Basically, whenever you build something new, you will you will uh, release it to uh, to customers and based on your their behaviors you will validate if, if it's working or if you need to improve something so uh, this kind of like learning will have uh, more and more like it's more and more important by the way if somebody has uh, any any question or or notes or something uh, just just interrupt me so this is, I would say, a uh, simplified model. So for example, when we start new product, like what we should be communicating in the beginnings of project is mainly like, okay, what we need to find out about uh, the users, about the business. And then slowly over time, we should be more and more asking the question, okay, what we should build next. Uh, if I go, let's say into more details. I think the very first phase is about like the learning part is really about acquiring some initial data. Exactly, you you are uh, trying to figure out how we can conduct interviews, how we will find uh, potential users. Basically, that's what we are, for example, doing on, on Legacy that, you know, for example, Raze is, uh, he launched some, some campaigns. And what we are trying to do is uh, set up some interviews with us where we can where we talk with <clears throat> those uh, potential customers we are uh, asking them to fill surveys to, to get some data and uh, we have some initial responses uh, so we have some like different mixed signals and and uh, that's that's a good start in the building phase uh, or in the building part, what you are trying to figure out is like, what is the really key feature, key element that we should uh, be focusing on? This key feature obviously should, uh, because you, for example, do the competitive analysis, 
you should the the feature should somehow distinguish you from the competitors if you do just uh the very same thing as uh other like why why would you know users uh use your application so uh here in this way is really about figuring out figuring out what is the key element that makes you successful and that and that element should also uh ideally attract at least first early adopters and get uh, sort of feedback from them. Uh, I call this phrase like MTP. So like when we are building minimal testable product, product like the goal here is to test if we uh, find the right core feature, if we get some traction, uh, at least initial, and uh, to learn at least some basic information about users and our business. Then we have the second stage where we are building minimal viable product, which means that we want to go with that public uh, and get a much broader audience and therefore a much broader feedback for, from real people. In the learning part, uh, basically you have more and more signals and you can start sort of recognizing some clusters of the similar similarities and what we are trying to find out here is sort of how this how strong is the signal that for example i don't know in the first phase you know the users will tell you in a couple of users you have i don't let's say five ten interviews and they will tell you hey i have you know again i will use the legacy problem hey i have a problem i'm using many uh social media but it's very hard to for me to read them all because you know i need to uh, switch between them there's those endless timelines and it's or news feeds or how, however it's called and it's really hard for me to to read all the information cool so we we know it from from the interviews and in this stage it's really about trying to figuring out if it's if if it uh, if this problem ha has only one person or if it's something that you know many and many people uh, have that and we can build a product around it so for example a uh, good solution is for example try to do like exactly what we are doing on legacy do some kind of surveys and basically ask people hey do you have the similar uh, do you have this problem agree or disagree and if you see okay you know hundreds of people uh, have this problem okay then you uh, have uh, better confidence that that this is a real uh, signal that people are having this problem and you can start preparing solution that that uh, solves this and of course since we are in the mvp phase uh, you build the product you will show it to them and you will see if there is attraction around it so the goal here in the learning part is really recognizing the main uh, like let's say direction main problem that users are having validate like which business models might work so for example again <clears throat> on legacy we are trying to figure out like what's kind of like should there be like subscription model or some kind of different model and again here you are trying to validate uh which one is uh better for for the product you are building on the building part obviously somebody wants to say something I, I just wanted to like on, on that also like we are asking them if they are willing to pay right for that exactly. since you mentioned the business model and this helps some people they said like uh, yeah it's nice but i wouldn't pay for it some of them willing to pay ten dollars some of them 20 and so right. on exactly exactly and on the building part basically you know you have the core feature that you hopefully validated that is interesting for users but you, you need to build many, many pieces around it. And, uh, you know, whenever you start new version, usually, okay, you start building uh, many, many elements, but actually you need to, there is lots of, let's say, maybe technical there, but also like design that, that they are not playing together. So you need to start really uh, trying to figure out how all should fit together to, to create really interesting, uh, product that is that will be helpful for broader audience so you know you are figuring out okay what are the next pieces that uh, that we should build and how they should play together uh 
in this phase, hopefully, uh, when you launch the MVP, you will find out if uh, you get some significant significant traction that it's not really the the product. It's not just for early adopters, but uh, that you can hit also, let's say, the mainstream audience, and you can really, uh, let's say, create significant. Uh, let's say that you are a significant player on on the market and and that your business is really viable and then there is the sorry the latest part which is uh, that you are really trying to scale the project from uh really from startup to to real business and so on the learning part you have so many information like you you have customer feedback like people start emailing you like what they like what they dislike you have plenty of analytics data and so on so it's it's really a huge mess and what you need to do is start really uh organizing all those insights and try to somehow uh turn them into some kind of like let's say patterns uh that will help you to really really uh guide you uh like what you should be building because uh if somebody work on some projects where you uh, receive like hundreds of uh emails on the customer support it's frankly very easy to just start uh serving those few that that uh, sent you that email but for example the reality is that it could be the min minority of people and it's it's really a mess so uh for researcher it's really uh important to really find out like what are the true patterns and what are the true signals and really make some sense of it uh, so we can do then a better decision uh, about what we are building uh, in terms of like building uh frankly in this stage usually in backlog you can have hundreds sometimes even thousands of things that you would like to do because it's so obvious you have so many customer feedback so so ideas based uh on you know user testing and analytics that you know you can build anything or you have lots of ideas what to build but obviously you need to prioritize so here it's really about figuring out what we should build next what should be our priority uh, and sort of it's like a puzzle right like in, in the middle you have the the core functionality and you try to uh, enlarge the products so it covers more use cases and uh, in order to get like bigger market uh, buy uh, but here really the question is like what we should build build next uh, in order to get uh, the product even more successful um, so that's uh, the evolution of product strategy so again in the beginning it's really about getting at least some data so we can do decision based on something focus on one core functionality and really make it great and 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 validate that people are attracted to that idea and the mvp is about um starting like start getting the the feedback from the real people and also building like coherent product that is not just for like for geeks but also for let's say mainstream users and this latest stage is really about organizing all the feedback that uh, that you are overwhelmed with and all the data that you you have uh, access to and really figure out what is our roadmap and what we should build next in order to get successful so <clears throat> If I summarize this, like the product strategy has like two parts, right? Like learning and building. And actually, the and for the learning, it's basically bottom-up discovery, where you from all those user interviews, user testing, stakeholder interviews, competitive analysis, and, and many more things, you are getting some signals that you somehow organize in user insight, business insight, uh, competitive uh, analysis. And from that, you are somehow, I know that's very like theoretical, but like basically you are trying to abstract some principles and objectives that you want to, uh, that you are following, uh, you know, habits and, and processes are established. And all that basically creates the vision of, of your of your uh, product. 
On the other hand, when you are building, you have actually the, the, the vision and below that, uh, it's, it's, you know, you have design strategy, testing strategy, architecture, deployment strategy, which sort of guides you how you should develop the product. And in the bottom, you have, uh, we can call it product initiatives. Uh, some people, including Basecamp, they call it best that you are betting on some feature. We can call it epics. It really doesn't matter. But you have like concrete things uh, that you want to do, and that, uh, and of course, you know, when you have some you know projects or epics, uh, then it's a breakdown to concrete tasks that the dev team uh, needs to do. So. In this case, it's more like top-down shaping. Then, from the vision, you are trying to recognize the the the, the projects that you want to try, uh, and uh, then the task that uh, really needs to be done. Uh, here are a couple of examples uh, of how people sort of organize the product strategy. Again, frankly, I, I don't like those things that much. I think it's great for inspiration. But again, for me, it's not about that we would fill this form and say, OK, we have product strategy, because then it will end up the same way as it ended up with me on that code. So well, what a bullshit, what a corporate bullshit. And you are right. Like Basically, if you just say some nice vision or uh, in two sentences say the needs of the users, well, it, it will not tell you much, but if it's really this like bottom-up approach that is basically just summarize all the insights and the team actually knows about the user insight, business insight, and about, about all the context, like suddenly then it makes sense. So I would not like I would not use those kind of things as a as a form that we we, we should have on all projects, but as an inspiration what kind of things which we should be asking when we are trying to learn about the project and when we are building the project. Um, and sure, like we can, you know, fill it, but again, this is, that's not the product strategy. It's, it's maybe some uh, formal way how to, how to express the product strategy, but the product strategy actually is that you are constantly transparently communicating all the insights about the project to the to the dev team uh, that is building the project and also to other uh, to other stakeholders. Uh, one thing uh, maybe that to mention or that uh, many people support is that, for example, the vision should be user centric. So uh, the vision shouldn't be like never should be something like, you know, I want to make more money, but uh, it should be something like that. I want to solve something for for the users. So it really should be uh, user centric. Otherwise, <clears throat> I will share the share the this uh, this presentation and you can uh, check it later. Uh, again, for me, it's just just an inspiration. Uh, here is another example um, I like on this one that sort of it works with this what will what was before what is now and where we are heading so there is some some kind of uh, evolution included in this and I actually like this approach that since we never know for sure that it will be working for it's really a bet and I like this kind of thinking so again it could be uh, inspirational um, but again, I guess you guys can check it uh, later. Um, here's one more, which I will go a little bit more detail through it um, and uh, give you some examples. Um, this decision stack, basically they, they create this uh, or they formalize the product strategy in a, in a way that at the top there is a vision, then there is strategy how to achieve that vision. Then there are uh, concrete objectives, and then uh, you know uh, projects, epics, bets that uh, like concrete initiatives that we should do in order to achieve uh, those objectives. And then there are uh, they call it like guiding principles, and I will show you in a moment. Again, in this you can see like this bottom up approach and and top down approach approach. So. Basically, you are always asking why you should do this, but also like when you are doing this, like it, 
it basically it answers uh, how you should do it. Uh, so it just um, anyway confirmation what what I said before. Uh, here are, for example, examples of some of the companies and uh, how they formulate their vision. Again, for example, if you really want to have the conversation with your team on your projects about the vision, again, I think it should start really from the insight about the users and business. And then based on that, really create a vision. I don't think we need to formulate it in this very nice uh, way where Lots of copywriters spend time to really nail down one sentence, but it's really more about, you know, the sentence can be clumsy, but like we should be, like everyone should be, uh, every, everyone should know why we are doing things, right? And uh, that's, that's the vision, right? So anyway, that's just for inspiration. Uh, like, the next slide is about those principles. Uh, I think that's that's actually uh, interesting. Um, for example, you know, somebody could say, okay, the principle should be make as much money as possible, right? But that's kind of short-term goal or like very simplified view, like in order to get, you know, uh, more profits, uh, you need to, first offer some nice product and basically those principles uh, somehow um, try to uh, communicate that. That for example, Monster is saying, okay, job seekers come first, recruiters will follow, uh, which means that, you know, you need to have like database of lots of people. Uh, and then uh, of course the recruiters can work with the database and then the whole uh, business model and whole product will work. Uh, for example, one one thing that, uh, for example, is for Twitter, it's not here, is that actually they find out based on user insights that the active use, like to, to achieve lots of activity from users, uh, they need to, uh, the users needs to have at least 20 plus followers. Uh, and the reason is that if you have, if you following, oh, sorry, like that you need to follow at least 20 people. And the reason is that if, for example, if you follow, you know, two, three people, usually you don't have that uh, long timeline. So there's not in enough interesting content and people will stop using Twitter. So for example, the guiding principle for Twitter is to force sort of people into follow as much people as possible, at least 20. Uh, rather like uh, ideally even more. And then people will really have like nice timeline, which is always that every day or every few hours, there is lots of new contents, uh, content. And then people are really start regularly using the, uh, the application. So those principles, like try to recognize those principles is actually very important because then it will help you uh, to make more successful pro uh, product. Uh, so in case of Twitter, like because they know uh, when they are, for example, discussing the roadmap, they are, or what they should research, like because the principles is that they are trying to, uh, to force people, the new people uh, to have as many, uh, try to follow as many people as possible. They are, you know, finding ways how to achieve that, right? So uh, that's uh, one thing for, or one example for inspiration. Um, here are, for example, the way how you can formulate those principles that, uh, for example, user growth, uh, even over revenue, it means that, uh, you should more, for example, focus on uh, attracting new people uh, rather than uh, purely on revenue, because again, it, the revenue could be very misleading because short term you can achieve that. But if you don't have the user growth, steady user growth, then, then your business is not working. Or for example, mobile experience uh, over desktop. Uh, for example, on Atco, we have it actually the other way. We have desktop experience over mobile because frankly, uh people engineers our target audience 
uh, when they are working they use desktop application so it's it's uh, for us it's way more important to focus on desktop rather than on on mobile experience uh, here is example for Google what's their vision that they want to organize worse information and make it universally accessible and useful what is the strategy for them uh, you can read it on your own uh, I guess again there are in, like the principles are interesting so what they are trying to achieve is to be as fast as possible to have as accurate uh, results as possible uh, so whenever they do new features uh, they are trying to uh, follow this principle so if you remember a few years back when they uh, when they launched this new feature and i forget how it was called but basically when you are start writing immediately they show you the results actually it was pretty new uh, many um, many search engines are still not using this principle but because for Google, uh, the principle is to show the result as as uh, as fast as possible. Uh, they do they did this feature. Um, so this is sort of summary why we have product strategy. You know, great vision that basically answer the question why we are doing things. Uh, great, great strategy tells you what and great principles how. Uh, the more important is this one is it really the product strategy should really help you to do better decision and actually sort of even decrease number of decision that you need to make because uh, the direction is real clear. It should help the team uh, like lower the, the conflicts between different uh, Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Uh, it should help basically with uh, preventing for like the team overload with information. I think in South Africa we don't have such problem because we don't have like huge, huge projects uh, like this uh, with you know millions of customers. But trust me, for example, if you are Google or or you know. I don't know, like companies like Basecamp, they, they have like, for example, 10, 15 people on customer support, you know, talking with uh, with customer every day and they have lots of feedback and you need to really organize it. So, and the product strategy, strategy in this stage really helps you with that. In terms of the team, it should really uh, help, actually it should help uh, them to take more responsibility for, for decisions uh because since they are aligned uh the the managers including product managers should have like a uh, higher trust uh because everyone is aligned and then the team can do uh more decision than than if the product strategy is not clear and basically the the managers needs to micromanage to to some degree the team uh it should also help with the velocity and quality because as i said like you know people know all the context and they could do better decisions what should be what should they focusing on and and stuff like that 